essentially the surplus from last year? That was on, that includes depreciation. This would not include depreciation in the expenses. So over here, we've, you're saying we've got 15 million in the bank? Mm-hmm. No, uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, on page, page eight is the uh, income statement, if you will, on a cash basis for your, uh, your funds. And it showed that the general fund increased its fund balance by about uh, eight, $847,000. Uh, it transferred $350,000 over to special reserve. So that increase after expenses is about $288,000. So we have about $5.8 million in special reserve fund balance. Okay. The only other, any questions so far? Am I going too fast or going so, in too much detail? So it, maybe it's just an accounting thing, but mm. was the... Dan, could you speak up, please? Sure. So, so people can hear. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. So maybe it's an accounting thing, but was the surplus, maybe that's the wrong term, $700,000 in that one statement, or was when you, it... When you, so that one statement, the statement of net position and statement of activities includes depreciation okay. as an expense. So that's going to reduce... About your, how much is depreciation? I can tell you right now. Yeah. 200, and, um, I'm sorry, $617,000, and we added about $240,000 to your uh, um, fixed assets, your capital assets. Mm -hmm. So that that the net of those two is the difference between the uh, net income on the modified cash basis versus the net income on a cash basis. So the net income on the cash was about a million one? Correct. Okay. And that would be, in layman's terms, sort of the modified cash surplus from last year was Correct. a million one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, cash basis. But not modified cash, just cash basis, right. million one. Right. Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I was pointing him to page nine, where we show the difference between the cash basis and the modified cash basis, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. The only other page I wanted to point out is um, near the back of the report, we have um, on pages 38 and 39 is your, more on 39, is the, your status with the IMRF. And near the bottom right column of page 39, there's a percentage of 99.5%. You're 99.5% funded as a pension uh, for your employee's pension, which is pretty fun to say in Illinois. <laughs> uh, um, suffice it to say that that is a point in time measurement as of 1231.17. If you remember back what the what the markets were like then mm -hmm. we had a wonderful year our 401ks were 501ks then not the 301ks that happened today so um we had a really good year and the easiest place to point that out is under the 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 plan fiduci the bolded part that says plan fiduciary net position third line down and in net investment income 600,014 53,015 uh, 700,016, two million dollars in in 17. So that's it in a nutshell. That's why you were uh, increased your percentage at that point in time. Mm -hmm. So we hope the markets hold for this year, and but, we can continue saying. And IMRF handles all that, right? And I, you, the only thing you do is on page 38, which is pay into IMRF at a set percentage that they calculate on a monthly basis, that percentage of covered payroll. So, and that has gone down slightly over the last four years, about 1% over a four-year period. That's all I have to say about this document. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have about it. If not, we'll flip over to the uh, uh, auditor communication, which is the other document you have. This is our required communications to the board. It contains a cover letter that describes why we're doing this. And then starting on page two begins the required communications. It goes on for uh, three pages. No's in this section are good. 
We had no disagreements with management. We had no issues. There's literally nothing to report other than that we implemented the other post-employment benefit standard, um, which had virtually no effect on you. We also show you the adjusting journal entries we made, and then the management letter is in the back. We don't have any new comments, and we update you on the old comments from prior years. Um, the very first one is segregation of duties. I don't think we'll ever ever get rid of this at an organization of this size with so few people with working on the accounting system, as it were. Mm -hmm. So we're, that one's going to be consistent. And then we talk about whether or not uh, modified cash basis. Uh, that, that's a comment that we'll continue to have. And just to, just to remind you, the comptroller, when Susan Mendoza took care of, took over, suggested that cash basis was potentially against the state statute. Everybody and their brother that's involved in local government came out against that and said it's perfectly legal, you're looking in the wrong section, it's, it's uh, allowable under state law, and please leave it alone. And she acquiesced that after about a year and a half, but um, basically said if any new governments come into existence, they cannot be on cash basis, and um, that's, that's all there is to it. So she, it's been blessed. You can continue. Can, you've been grandfathered Grandfather. correctly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well put. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say about the, this. God, it went very well. Um, we've had the same staff out here for a couple of years now, working with Barbara. We've been able to get in and out uh, pretty much on time and get the report in a draft form out, the only holdup this year. The only reason we're in November instead of October was the hiring of the actuary, which, again, won't happen in the future, I don't think. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? You, you look at a lot of um, libraries, a lot of public bodies. I mean, it, so in, in terms of the financial health, you said we're, we're in good shape. Yeah. Are we in too good shape, or are we, in, are, are we in a safe place to be to be, to be be um, protecting of the, both the library and the community in terms of what we've done in terms of the financial? So so as an auditor, I'm pretty much a pass-fail. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I don't give grades. Sure. That would be a rating agency's job or a financial analyst. I also don't have, I'm a financial historian, so I don't know what your plans are for the future for that money. Um, if you have a five-year capital plan or have um, expansion, on your minds or renovation or anything like that. If it's not too large a, a, a project, you would be able to pay cash for it. Um, but if it were a new library, sure, right. Okay. So I, looking backwards, you're, you're flush, but looking forward, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know what your plans are um, for your capital or your capital needs. I know that in the past, we talked a great deal uh, with staff about your uh, boiler system and right. things of that nature, and uh, there were some renovations to that were done, but I don't. In other words, I don't know. Okay, and then and my other question would be, and I know we're looking in terms of looking backwards in terms of 2017, in terms of being so close to being fully funded with the pension plan, which is great. Again, is there anything that you know of in terms of where we would sit from t the end of 2017 to today, as you said, with the market? The, the, the IMRF has traditionally done a very good job of, of, of not losing money even in the worst markets. Okay. But, but as we saw, they had that one year where they only made 50, you, your portion of their net income was only $55,000. Okay. So it, it, pretty much anything could happen between now and then. Um, but hopefully it stays at least status quo. Um, but that, but that percentage is purely subject to the market value of their portfolio on twelve thirty one of any given year. Sure. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Hey, Ron. A couple of clarifications in terms of our our IMRF position. Mm -hmm. At least forty percent of IMRF's projected earnings are market based. Oh, absolutely. So their investments are part of their plan for how they're going to keep the level of contributions that we make uh, at a minimum level. Employees make contributions. We make a contribution. Those are paid for out of a special levy that we make every year and is in our annual tax uh, assessments or our, our levies. 
by statute we have to levy for that. We don't have the possibility of the state pension crises that have been discussed at length because small municipalities and units of government don't have the option of falling as far behind as the teacher pensions and police and fire, which are the big ones. Um, so we've always been protected by the fact that we have an obligation to levy what is needed to keep us um, in good shape with respect to IMRF. To make your required contribution. What varies is that based on what IMRF informs us about our liability or, or our position with respect to those funds, we have to adjust the special levy for those purposes in our annual levy, which we do. It's not a large portion of our total levy. It never has been. When the market excels, as it did last year, then our contribution goes year. down. <laughs> and when the market is struggling, and IMRF is a, is income is way down, our levy amount for IMRF purposes goes up. But not by huge amounts in any case, nope. because we are we are on a pay as you go as you go obligation under the statutes. So we don't have the possibility of falling as far behind as teacher and fire and police, which is the big news that gets all the attention. Those are the funds at which the legislature determined that they would not pay the required amounts into those funds over periods of time. And some large municipalities like Chicago also did not make the required contributions as a way to keep their tax rates lower. That's not an issue for us. So, you know, the questions that relate to IMRF are really very well controlled because we don't get to defer those payments. And they're not huge for us because we haven't let them accumulate into a deficit position. So, you know, we're in a much better position as far as that's concerned. Uh, the other major issue for us is that we have reduced our levies. Um, we, are, we have a 6% reduction in the levy that's on our agenda tonight. Over last year, we have reduced the levies the last couple of years. Um, and we are intending to continue not to increase more than is needed. Our present share of the local tax bill is under 4%. And that's what the residents of Wilmette have asked us to do. They've re they request services in our long-range planning process, and, and our commitment as a board is to meet those service requests as much as we're able within the 4% of the tax bill that they've authorized by referendum we're doing that, and so, you know, the issues that we're facing are really all defined within those parameters. The residents have asked for services. We repeat our long-range plan every few years, and we strive to meet the services that we can support within the amount of the tax levy that they have authorized us uh, to, to carry forward. So that's the principal issue. The other thing is we have an old building that does require more expenditures for maintenance than a new building would. We have no intention of building a new building. This building is in fine shape because we've maintained it. But there will be some additional expenditures over time. And there are some things that we still have not fully resolved on the parking issue. So the, the, the reality is we're in good financial shape within the limitations that the residents have authorized for the library district. Right. Thank you, Ron. Um, and at least have any other yeah. yeah. Do you anticipate any changes from the state in terms of how libraries are gone? Is there anything on the horizon? Or is this a, dull, is this a dead year? I, I would be, I'd be 
purely speculating. I haven't heard anything out of ILA or Rails that those are my primary sources of mm -hmm. uh, future um, um, legislation or the potential. I haven't heard anything at all on that. Have you? No, that's oh, what I was asking okay. you. Yeah. <laughs> that's, not, that's not my Good. lane. So. No, Good. Um, no not that I'm aware. Uh, Dan? Thank you. Um, so one other question. Um, so you, you do a lot. First, I want to congratulate you. It's a very compelling, clear document, uh, and it goes back 10 years. So yep. it's a great job. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is the um, So for us, our big difference is between our what we appropriate and what we actually spend and it by a, a significant difference of about a million two. And if, am I reading that right? The, we're required to show in our report your appropriations, not your budget. Yeah. So you, most of the time, most of my clients will come up with a working budget, yeah. and then that's the basis for the appropriation. The appropriation is significantly higher than that as kind of a catch-all because that's your legal spending authority. Your working budget is your day-to-day, month-to-month target that your department heads attempt to live within, and generally speaking, do. Yeah. But then the, the, at, at some of my clients, they put as much as 